our God. Every word of worship.
Come on, church. If you're not, I'll put your hands together. Put your hands together for every praise. Come on. Come on.
word says, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to our God, come on somebody, that he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus the Christ. How many believers we got in the building this afternoon? Come on. And if you believe in our Lord, why don't you take about three seconds and give God the best praise that you can give him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do much better than that. I want you to give praise to the God that woke you up this morning. Give praise to the God that set you in your right mind, that put clothes on your back, food on your table. Let's give that God some praise. Hallelujah. As we come to celebrate the homegoing celebration of officer master deputy courtney harrell hamilton we've already established that this is the day that the lord has made and i'm a firm believer that god does not make any mistakes come on so as we celebrate the life the legacy the love of officer hamilton sunrise november the 22nd 1967 Sunset, July the 28th, 2021. My name is Pastor Curtis Crocker, lead pastor of Metropolitan Baptist Church and the lead chaplain at the Cab County Sheriff's Office under the leadership of Sheriff Melody Maddox. We want to say thank you to uh, St. Philip AME Church and Dr. Watley for allowing us to be a part of this uh, or having this celebration here at his place on today. And we give God all the glory for everything that's about to take place. Listen, beloved, there is a program that has been outlined by the family. And we're going to follow that program as outlined. Next, you will hear a musical selection from Minister Timothy Wilcox. Scripture readings from the family, Pastor Ronnie Ricks and his wife, Evangelist Angela Ricks. And there's a prayer by Andrew Wilcox. Are you in the building? Yes, indeed. 
when we come and have and make remarks, please make sure that we come over to the right to the podium. And while we are in this pandemic, let's make sure that we maintain COVID protocols. Keep your mask on and also maintain social distances. Amen. To God be the glory at this time. We will receive Minister Timothy Wilcox. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glad to be here. Amen. I miss my cousin, good, very dear individual, more like a father figure, but we thank God for his service to the Lord and also to his county, to his, amen, to his city and state. So we're going to sing amen today I'm going to help me out praise God how many wants the Lord to order their steps amen, amen. The Bible said that a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord and I believe his was ordered today amen so we're going to try to get through as best we can amen Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing. Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing. Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Humbly I ask you, teach me thy will. While you are working, help me be still. Satan is busy, God is real. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Right of my tongue, let my words edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Take charge of my thoughts both day and night. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. I want to walk worthy. Yes, I do my calling to fulfill if you order my steps, Lord. I'll do your blessed will. The world is ever changing. Oh, but you are still the same if you order my steps. I'll praise your name. I want to, I want to walk worthy. My calling, my calling to fulfill. If you order my steps, Lord, I'll do your blessed will. The world is ever changed. Oh, but God, but you are still the same. If you order my steps, I'll praise your name. How many wants to do this? 
Order my steps. Order my steps in your word. Order my tongue in your word. Guide my feet in your word. Wash my heart in your word. Show me how to walk in your word. Show me how to talk in your word. What? When I need a brand new song to sing, show me how to let your praises ring in your word. In your word. Please order my step in your word. Please order my step in your word. Let the saints of God say, man, I've been given the task of reading the Old Testament scripture. I want to come to you from the book of Isaiah, the chapter is 40 and the verse is 31. Let me give you some contextual background before I read Isaiah 40, 31. God's children was in exile. They they were in captivity, and a small remnant, that mean a few, was being faithful even, even in captivity. They were in captivity because of disobedience. But God was telling them, I'm going to, through Isaiah, I'm still going to keep my promise to you. And, and they saw loved ones pass. They saw loved ones mistreated. But yet, God was still there with them. And he just reminded them of this. Told them uh, in Isaiah 40, 31, he wanted them to know that uh, uh, for them to be strong in the Lord, stand firm on the word that he's going to strengthen them. He said, they that wait upon the Lord. And that word wait is a causative verb. That's saying, keep on doing what you're doing. They that wait upon the Lord, even though you're in exile, even though you're going through the go through, even though you're crying every day, every night, wait on the Lord. He said, and, and while you're waiting, continue to believe and know that I am God, and besides me, there is none other. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and they won't get weary. And even when they decide to slow down from running, guess what he said? You shall walk and not faint. Family, I just encourage you to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. May God bless you and may he keep you. And to God be the glory. Family, I just wanted to let you know that in this time, trust in the Lord your God. With all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and let, allow him to direct your path. On John 14, leading up to the 27th verse, Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure. He was introducing the Holy Spirit to them. And as, I, as you know the Holy Spirit, and as the Holy Spirit continues to guide and order your steps, 
and give you the comfort that you need. I leave you with these words from John 24 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The same path that Courtney walked down and went through and hit, this is his final resting for us. Know that the peace of the Lord is your strength. Know that we're all going to have to go down this same path. All of us have an expiration date. His came sooner than some of us expected. But know that God does everything in his own perfect timing. And with you, his peace will subside. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, church. Before I pray, I just want to say this is an adjustment, what I call a shift for me and my family. Uh, Courtney was our cousin. We're all from Miami. Most of our family is from Miami. And, uh, you know, his home going is, is, a, is a blow to us, but everybody has to go through that at some point in life. But I want to say this, that he was our cousin, but he was more than a cousin. He was a brother. And we looked forward to every time he would make that visit down to us in Miami. You know, it was always Courtney Coletta, Courtney Coletta. We loved them so much that I tell you, when we heard they were coming to Miami, you might as well put it in the newspaper. It needed to be the headline because that was big news. We'd celebrate just the fact that we knew they were coming. And so this is a loss for us today. But I was taught in church that when you're going through those rough times of life, you need to praise your way out of it. And so I agree with Pastor when he said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so we should rejoice. But I'm going to even go a step further. The scripture tells us that I will bless the Lord at all times. That includes even now, especially now. We, anybody can praise him when you're going through the good times. But when you go through a rough time, like losing a loved one, this is the time to praise him. So we're going to do that. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help we know. If you withdraw yourself from us, oh God, whither shall we go? Father, we come right now to give you praise. Right now, oh God, you are God. At all times, you are God. You're an awesome God. You're a wonderful God. You're a loving God. You're a merciful God. You're an everlasting God. And so, Father, even today, even right now, we come to give you the praise. Glory. We love you, God. We trust you, God. We obey you, God. We bow to your will, oh God. You made a decision, oh God, to take him. And so, God, the only thing we do right now is ask for your peace, the peace that only you can give, oh, God. Touch in each and every one of our family members, oh, God. Touch them right now. We need you, God. And you know you, we know that you promised in your word you would never leave us or forsake us. So we stand on your word today, oh, God, and just thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Bless us now in the days ahead. And we'll be so careful, God, to give you the honor, you the glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the church say amen. Come on, give them praise. It's okay. Come on, give them praise. That's right. I believe we serve a true and a living God. Amen. And during this next part of the, um, the celebration, the remarks and reflections, and in the program it says two minutes, please. But these reflections should come from the heart, from your relationship that we had with 
Officer Hamilton. So in this order, Marion Holston, followed by Sheriff Melody Maddox, Sergeant Andy Bell, Deputy Billy Stevenson, and Deputy Michael McRae. In that order, please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. As my brother said, we're here today to honor God for the life of our dear Courtney. Our hearts today are sad because he left us. But we still have joy because we serve a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that today, we are truly grateful. But I'm here to talk about Courtney. And I, I got all the family minutes, so I might be two minutes over, okay? With that being said, from the very beginning, Courtney was a blessing. You see, my mom birthed 10 children. So she kept popping them out, popping them out. But the year that Courtney was born, my mom was pregnant that same year and she had her last child, Noel, and Courtney and Noel were born two weeks apart. And after um, Courtney was born, my mom said, okay, Willie Bell, you could have it. And she didn't have any more children after that. So we were grateful because, you know, she already had 10 and we trying to figure out how we gonna eat. So we were grateful to Courtney just for that. But um, as my brother shared, the relationship between the Ohio family and the, fa and the Miami family was very close because Willie Bell's mom lived in Miami. So every summer she came down to Miami and brought the, the um, children. So we knew that we would get to spend our summers together. And so as time went on and Courtney grew up, you know, he was a little mischievous. So I remember one summer he got a beat down. Um, so Willie Bell tore his butt up and he crying and yelling and screaming. And then when she finished, you know, he had to come and face his 10 cousins. And he, and he said, uh, that didn't hurt. Now nah, that didn't hurt. <laughs> and, and that was the beginning of that tough mantra that he had. You know, Courtney was a, a little short guy, but you know, he was tough. You know, he was tough. Nothing was gonna bother him. So my, my daughter moved to Atlanta and for a while she stayed with Courtney. And so one night she was riding the Marta and some guy on the train started, you know, bothering with her, messing with her, and she was trying to ignore him and continue on her way and he kept messing with her. And then when she got off the Marta, he took a bottle and threw at her. So she was so upset, she went home crying, she went to Courtney and she said when she told Courtney about it, she saw some little things growing in his head. Um, and he said, you know where he is? And she said, yeah. He said, come on. And um, he went and they actually found the guy. And so when he found the guy, you know, he said to him, what the heaven's name, my words, not his, you doing to my cousin? And he went on to give him a few more choice words um, in heaven's name, my words, not his. And so at the end of it, my daughter say, he told him to turn around, put some handcuffs on him, called his partners to take him away. Now, Chief, I don't know if that's protocol, but he gone now, so ain't nothing you can do about it. He gone. He gone. I don't know if that's protocol, but you know, he was going to let that brother know, you don't mess with my cousin. You mess with the wrong one that night. You know, that's Mr. Tough Courtney. So as life continued, you know, tough, always trying to play the tough role. You know, he missed the tough. So going through some things in life, um, you know, went, he got married. I went there. Then he ended up getting divorced. You know, people do that. And so talk, trying to talk to him and everything. You know, Courtney, you all right? You know, just trying to minister or whatever. And he always... I'm all right, I'm all right. I say, you know, it's okay if you, you know, you all right. We're here for you. Ain't no thing like a chicken wing, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, 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 that's him. You know, nothing but Mr. Tough Guy, Mr. Tough Guy. And then time goes on. His father passed, and, you know, we up in Ohio. And, um, 
you could tell it was affecting him a little bit. You know, you all right? I'm all right. I'm, I'm all right. I'm good. <laughs> you know, my allergies, you know. You know, always want to play the tough band. You know, that started long ago. But we always look forward to cutting, Courtney, because as my, my brother said, you know, w whatever we had, Courtney was uniquely Courtney. We'd come down the road on his motorcycle. You know, we'll say, you're going to wear this color. He'll come in his African attire. Uh, we come down the road and his bikers, you know, his bike. And, and when he came down for funerals, you know, and he wasn't in his uniform. He was in his biker state, but he would get in the procession or with the um, motorcycle guys and, and help direct the motorcycles and all that kind of stuff, just playing the tough man role. But we used to get in debates all the time about different things, you know, because he got in debate because he voted for Trump and all that junk, you know. God delivered him, though. But anyway... The latest debate that I, I had with Courtney was over getting the shot for this pandemic. You know, and I said, Courtney, you, you're a police officer. You encounter, you know, a lot of people on a regular basis. I say, boy, you need to protect yourself. Nah, you know, that thing killed Hank Aaron. You know, I take my chances. And um, two months ago, our family was together again, probably for the first time um, since the pandemic. Actually, we were together when my brother passed last year, but then um, again for a happy occasion two months ago when my niece got married. And um, Courtney and I got into it again with the mask. And I said to Courtney, Courtney, you know, you need to get that shot. I said, a long time has passed now. And I say, you know, you, you see what's going. No, stubborn, stubborn, tough Courtney, you know. I said, Courtney, you don't take that shot. I said, you know, you were talking about maybe dying from a shot. I said, but you know, COVID will kill you too. I said, COVID will kill you too. No, no, no. Well, tough man ran into COVID. And it did kill him. But the thing that hurt us so bad and really hurt me was because I, tried to convince him otherwise. But I knew that God had a purpose because a lot of people get COVID and they don't die like that. He died the day that he found out. And they don't drop out like that. You see, we are a praying family. And see, if we had known that he had it, we would have bombarded the gates of heaven. And we would have done everything that we could to pray him through. But it wasn't God's plan. And that's why I bring this up in this service today. Because God took him. Don't let his death be in vain. It's a message today. If you haven't gotten that shot, the shot of prevention, you need to get that shot. You see, he didn't have a chance to have the virus and recover. He didn't get that chance. And that's what really broke us. But I said, God, you're doing something here. You got to be doing something here. Because like I said, had we gotten the call, COVID, you know, court, you know, court family, I got COVID, y'all pray me through. But he was a tough guy. He w went through on, a, on his own, pretty much. He went through that thing on his own. Mr. Tough Guy. But had he let us know, he know he has a praying family. And we would have bombarded the gates of heaven. So as I be pre prepare to take my seat, and I know my family is happy, hear this word. <laughs> hear this word from me today. Do not let his death be in vain. He didn't get a second chance. He didn't get us a chance to recover. And you don't know if you will either. Get that shot. We loved Courtney. We loved him. And, and he will always be a part of us. And to little Courtney, we just want to say to you, we love you, baby. We love you. But today, we do bow to the will of God. 
And we just continue to give God glory and honor for all the great and marvelous things he has done and continues to do in our lives. Hallelujah. Greetings to everyone, to the pastor of this great church, St. Philip and Me Church, and to other ministers of the pulpit and in the house. Will all the members past and present of the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office please stand for me. <laughs> Deputy Courtney's family, I want you all to look around. He have, may have been you all's blood family, but he was our brother. He wasn't just an employee, he was a friend. And we always joked. He said, I'm, in, I'm a Morehouse man. I said, but you're in the sheriff's house now. <laughs> so I'm a graduate of Morris Brown College, which is an, also an HBCU, and we had a love for that. Thank you. You all may be seated. To his daughter, Courtney, and to the rest of the family, we want to send our sincere condolences and prayers on behalf of the 585 plus employees of the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office. Do know there's no words, there's nothing that we can say or do to bring about comfort to what has taken place here because we don't question God's work. But what we can do is smile and celebrate and think about the good memories that he has given us to take with us. And you will hear some of those stories from the other co-workers, his other brothers. But I want to leave you with this. Second Timothy 4 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And I'm sure what Deputy Hamilton will want us to do is to continue to do what we're doing so that we can fight the good fight and finish our good race so that God can tell us, well done, my good and faithful servant. A servant he was, a servant he did, and a servant he played at the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office with such integrity, dignity, spirited, jovial person, and we're going to miss his personality, his attitude every morning, every day. But we thank God for allowing him to be with us as our brother for 24 years with the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office. May God continue to touch and anoint you and give you all the praise and glory on this day going forward. Thank you. Greetings from Sergeant Bell. First and foremost, I want to give my condolences to the family for Courtney. I've known Courtney for my entire career. He was a very good friend of mine. We rode motorcycles together. He cut my lawn. I think he probably cut everybody's lawn up in here. Um, just a great guy, great guy. Uh, worked with him for years when I was a deputy out in the street. Uh, the latter part, I was able, to, I was blessed to supervise him for two years. Just a great guy. I mean, anything you ask, he, he was, he, he was more than welcome to do it. You know, he's a great guy. Um, there's a bunch of people we ride motorcycles with in here, and uh, they called him uh, Sensei. They called him Sensei because we had never seen nobody that had been to 49 states on his motorcycle, and uh, he was, he, he was the only one out of all the Harleys at a gold wing. But nobody, nobody questioned anything he said because anybody who's been to 49 states and only had one flat tire is, is the man. 
So uh, me and him had talked a while back. I told him when I retire, I want me and him to go ride. Well, the Lord saw otherwise. So um, he'll be with me. I'm going to honor every time I go into a new state. I'm going to say a prayer for Courtney because I love him. He was my brother. I'm trying not to cry. Um, I thank you, brother. I love you. I, I really do. It means a lot to me from the bottom of my heart. So thank you all for having me. Good morning, everybody. God is good. I just wanted to say, my name is Deputy Stevenson. Um, the years I have known Courtney, um, when I first met Courtney, um, most time when Courtney greet you, you always say, you all right. That's everybody, you all right. And most of the fellows, when he see the fellows, he always say, what it is, man? That was his famous saying, and son, your father, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, Courtney was genuine, very authentic. Everything that he did was like, had a cool swag to it. He was tough, cool with it. I just remember last week when I went to go pick up a tree in the county, so one of the officers asked me about Courtney. So the three inmates that I had to pick up remembered Courtney. He just broke down crying. And that, that says a lot because he said Courtney was cool. He let us listen to the radio. He didn't play the mess on the on the van. And I, I mean, I mean, for him to just stop right there and, and, and started crying, it, it just really touched me. And I just want to say, most time in roll call, <laughs> Courtney would be the last one always saying jokes at the end of roll call. Some of the jokes was corny, but you had to look at Courtney like. Man, where, where did you get that from? And most of the time, on my way to work, me and, me and Courtney stayed in the same complex. He'll leave out before me, and most of the time, if I hear him on the radio, all my DKSO family, y'all already knew who he had done pulled over. It wasn't a car. It was a tractor trailer. Every morning, Courtney going to get him one. And once he went on the radio, y'all know how he used to say it, 127. I used to whip back for, the, for the, the sergeants when I first came out for radio etiquette. But he was so cool with it, didn't nobody say nothing to him about it. So I want to say this before I go. This is Alan. He says this is chapter 3, verse 2. It tells us, it is a time to be born and a time to die. Therefore, let us love one another, for God is love, and love is God. How good and pleasant it is for family to dwell together in unity. Let us praise and worship together, not just for this day only. Because just like Minister Wilcox said, God gave him the order to come on home. Hamilton is going to be okay. He's going to be okay, y'all. I'm telling you, he's going to be okay. But for every day, because family and friend is love, just remember to lift up your eyes unto the hill from whence come your help. Your help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen to the family. We bless you. And if y'all need anything from the DKSO family, we're here for you, okay? Good morning, everyone. So, guys, just give me a little bit, a little time here.
tough day. I so like to give honor to God who's ahead of my life. I uh, so like to acknowledge and share Melody Maddox and the whole entire DeKalb County Sheriff's Office staff. Courtney, well, we call him Ham, Hamilton, Hambone, Ham. You know, he was, this, this guy was our brother. You know, I, I sit up, sat last night and tried to, you know, put something on paper, but Hamilton was, Hamilton was unique. To make, I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. To the family, Deputy Courtney Hamilton, he was my hero. He was always my pride. He had given us so much love. He showed us what was deep inside. Hamilton was a good friend. He was my friend in public and in privacy. Really, there's, there's nothing no one can say bad about Hamilton because he was a good friend to all of us. <sighs> no, it's like, <sighs> we're going to miss Courtney forever. I know when I, when I heard the news, I was actually on vacation. I got text message and... Um, I just, I just froze. I stopped. I, I just, I couldn't even move. I just kind of yelled out and screamed um, to my family. Um, I just, I just, I couldn't do anything else. I just, I just, I just didn't believe it. I, I was like, this, some, this, I just didn't want to believe it. Um, you know, it just shut me down. You know, my heart right then and there. I just, a piece of my heart was just broken. Um, Hamilton, you know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to even go through the rest of this. You know, Hamilton was one of a kind. You know, like Stevenson said, when we went to roll call, we had to be a roll call at 6 o'clock in the morning. I would leave my house at about 5, you know, get to work at 6. We would be in roll call. And, you know, we have supervisors give us our details for the day on what we had to do. And at the end of the shift, we always, they would always say, Ham, you got, you know, what you got? what you got and Ham would give us that joke and some days Hamilton he would say that he was just give, he would say something or he would say the joke and I would say I'll, and I, I, I some days I will just shake my head and I'm like Ham for real <laughs> I was like for real Ham and I just said you must have was in their patrol car you went on your cell phone and just got that joke from you know I just I don't know where you get that joke from because he was just say some of the craziest things but you know like I said Hamilton was my friend he was I, I could confide in, in in Hamilton. You know, a lot of times me and Hamilton talk. Like I said, you know, it was it was it was conversations about life. It was conversations about family. It was conversations about, you know, and and whatever I know, what I told him, I know it would not go anywhere else. You know, he trusted me, and I trusted him. That's a friend. That's a true friend. Hamilton was my friend outside. Like I said and when we had this uniform on. One thing I did know when I was with Hamilton, that, that, gym, that hit guy, he had my back. He had all of our backs. It no matter when, like you said, when you heard that radio number and Hamilton was the only one that could stretch a radio number. I mean, we all have our radio numbers and Hamilton would stretch 127 for at least about three seconds. At least men, at least three seconds, you know. But we, we, you know, I look forward to seeing Hamilton every morning when I came to roll call. And, you know, he's just going to be missed. I mean, that guy, I loved him. You know, I, I lost my brother last year. And, you know, so many guys that I work with, I look at them as my brothers now. I said to the family, to the mother, daughter, cousins, Y'all guys, listen, y'all had that guy right there. Trust me, we, we loved him. I loved him. I loved him like he was my brother, blood brother. 
And trust me, like I said, he's he's going to be missed. We know it. We just, it's going to hurt. It's hurting me now. It's going to hurt me tomorrow, next month. But like I said, I won't have good memories. Like I, like they always told me, think about all the good memories you had with him. You know, and I'm going to cherish those good memories that I had with Hamilton. You know, when we worked on our little, even our little part-time jobs at night, me and Hamilton, we would work from, from midnight to the wee hours in the morning. And all night, we would just talk. We would just talk about life, you know, what's going on and everything. But, again, I'll just, you know, stay strong. We love you. The, the, the Cab County Sheriff's Office family love you. And we have you. Thank you. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. As you can see, family, Hambone touched a lot of people. And as you can see in the audience, there are people who have come from near and far to be a part of this home going service. I see in the back we've got Sheriff Skandrick. If you just raise your hand, sir, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, Chief Stringer sitting next to him. God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. One of my dear friends, gospel artist, Darwin Hobbs is in the building. Amen. God bless you. We're here to see you. So as you can see, family, he touched a lot of people. And one of the things that I'm going to miss about him is that when I saw him in the, in the hallways and he, after he said, what's up, man? And, and he would say, what's up, house? And I will respond to him, how you doing, house, as we both graduated from Morehouse. But to God be the glory. And I thank God for that experience. Yes, he will be missed. But you know something? In this brief time, I thank God for the, 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 the allotted time that he allowed me to share with him. Because he brought a smile with him every time we, just, we, we, we touched. So at this particular time, we would like to um, read the obituary. I know that some of you probably have been reading this throughout the whole service. And we'll take about another minute or so as music will be played, uh, then followed by a music selection by Minister Master Cook, and then you will hear the Right Reverend, or excuse me, Pastor Jermaine Johnson from Branch Worship Center. He will come and bring the eulogy, and yours truly will return before the acknowledgments of Willie Watkins and his staff. So God bless you. To God be the glory. Why don't you give God another hand clap of praise as we prepare for the rest of this service. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. I'm going to present to you the reading of uh, the obituary. But first, I had to get permission from my wife to tell a little story. And I'm going to reflect on the time I knew Courtney. And um, I've known him since junior high school. We've been friends ever since. And I remember back in, in high school, um, his sister had a little crush on me. And I, I used to always pick on them and stuff. I said, your sister liked me, Courtney. She doesn't like you. She used to come to the football games and see me playing. She'd try to get my attention. Say, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. And I would ignore her and stuff. And she'd get mad. I said, Why you ain't saying anything? I said, I can't talk to you in the game. So, so that, that um, passed. So um, nothing materialized from that. So when um, Courtney used to come home from college, we used to always go out together. We'd go to, go to parties and go to and hang out, and um, one, one day I came over, and I said, how's your sister doing? She, he said, oh, she's doing fine. She's doing fine. She's back there. I said, tell her, I said, hi. She said, oh, just call her, call her. So she, he actually gave me her number, and I called her. 
Next thing you know, we got married. <laughs> so it's amazing what the Lord can do. And um, we don't want Courtney's death to be in vain, as Miriam said. And I look at it from a different perspective. You know, Courtney's gone with the Lord now. The funeral is for all of us. So let's look at it like this. We don't want his death to go in vain because we want to prepare ourselves so that we can go up and meet him and be with him once again. That's what it's all about. So by not allowing him to die in vain is to prepare yourself to be with the Lord by accepting Christ as your Savior. That's how we don't allow him to die in vain. We prepare ourselves to meet him once again. That's what it's all about. And with that, I'm going to go with the reading of the obituary. Master Deputy Courtney Harrell Hamilton was born November 22nd, 1967, to the union of Willie Bell Hamilton Pearson and the late Harry Hamilton in Akron, Ohio. He attended Chapel Hill Christian School in Akron, Ohio. It was during this time he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior at the age of 10 years old. Amen. He then became a product of Akron Public Schools. His junior high school years were spent at Simon Perkins Junior High, and he graduated from John R. Bookdale High School, also known as the 1040, in June 1986. He was a proud HBCU graduate of Morehouse, Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, graduating in May 1990. Instead of returning home to Akron, Ohio, he decided to make Atlanta, Georgia his home. After graduating from college, Courtney worked for the Georgia State University Police Department. On June 14, 1997, he was hired as a deputy sheriff for DeKalb County Sheriff's Office. He was a beloved officer. He was known for his upbeat personality, and he always had a joke or a tease that kept everyone laughing. As a public servant, he thoroughly enjoyed selfless, selflessly serving and protecting others in his community throughout law enforcement. Through, through, through law enforcement. He also had an encouraging and inspirational thought for everyone who needed it. He was committed to helping people live a better life. One of his favorite pastimes was listening to music. He enjoyed listening to various genres, including traditional gospel music by the Mississippi Mass Choir. Traveling was also another one of his favorites. He loved to travel near and far to support family and friends, whether it was a birthday, retirement, wedding, or graduation celebration. He also enjoyed traveling just to see new places and faces. For the past 12 years, most of his traveling was on his Gold Wing motorcycle. During, during that time frame, he traveled to the 48 contiguous states on his motorcycle. He was even known for riding his motorcycle to his hometown in Ohio in the wintertime as long as there wasn't snow on the ground. Sadly, after a brief illness, Courtney, 53, passed away peacefully Wednesday evening on July 28th, 2021, at his home in Doraville, Georgia. He was preceded in death by his father, Harry Hamilton of Akron, Ohio, siblings David and Helen of Winter Haven, Florida. He leaves to cherish his memories, his daughter, Courtney, his mother, Willie Bell, Silas, six brothers, Kenny, Harold, Donnie, Philip, Michelle, Master, Demand, five sisters, Gloria, Shirley, Leonard, Angela, Joe, Mary, Carletta, Joseph, that's me, a group of special cousins from Miami, along with a host of dear aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. He also leaves behind his significant other, Sylvia. Master Deputy Courtney Hamilton had a servant's heart, and his presence will be greatly missed. God bless all of you.
My mama taught me uh, never sing with gum in your mouth, so I had to get a napkin and spit that on out. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together one time and bless the Lord. Come on, bless him like you're glad to be in the house of God one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord forever. To the esteemed clergy of this house and all the brothers and sisters gathered here in, in honor of uh, Courtney, uh, I need to say before I do what I came to do, um, I count it a privilege and an honor to be here. Courtney was and is my brother. Uh, I don't have any blood ties to Courtney, but I learned a long time ago that you don't necessarily need blood ties to form familiar ties. Can I get a witness? And so I, I thank God for the opportunity to honor him and honor my family uh, with this song. Uh, but before I do, I do have a memory of Courtney. Uh, every time Courtney came to Ohio on his gold wing, he had to get, what was it, Gio Nino's pizza? I never saw him eat anything else. And so uh, I know as a kid, I probably worked on his nerve uh, because I would run outside when he pulled up on that motorcycle and I'd ask him questions about this and that. Has he ever shot anybody? Lord help me. And, uh, and then one day, you know, I, I don't have a biological father, well I do, but I don't know who he is, right? So uh, my mom said, boy, I'm not about to deal with you in this tie. Go outside and ask Courtney to tie it. And I was like, I don't want to go outside and tie it. But I went outside and Courtney uh, very graciously showed me how to tie the knot in my tie. And I say that, yes, Lord. That's all right. Give God some praise for that. And I say that because Courtney always took a moment, uh, no matter how tired he was from travel, no matter you know, how irritated he might have been with, with this or that, he always took a moment to give me a word of encouragement and love, and so I thank God for him, and I thank God for all of you. Uh, I'm a little nervous because this is a big church, and I'm from a small church in Akron, Ohio, and all of y'all are looking so good and all these guns in the room. Amen. So uh, do me a favor, if you will. Help me if you get a little, more, a little bit more comfortable. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. <laughs> Let's try it again. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, take a good look at me. And I know you can't tell because I don't look like what I've been through. Now tell them, neighbor, the stuff I've been in, I should have been dead. It was a real close call, and I should have been dead. And if it had not been for God who was covering me, I would have been dead. Now touch somebody, you tell them, but neighbor, I'm still here. I wonder, can I get a witness? Is there a witness in the house today? that can say thank you for saving me. Thank you for preserving me. And I'm so glad that I'm still, that I'm still here. I, I didn't come to preach, but uh, I, I'm a little church boy. So, you know, sometimes it just jumps on out of me. Hallelujah. And uh, one, thing I, one thing I wanna say is that, mother, you raised a good man and a God-fearing man. I was telling Carletta uh, the other day, I said, well, you know, Courtney may not have gone to church a whole lot, but he got himself a godly family, and before he left here, he had himself a godly woman. You understand all that? Amen. Let's bless the Lord for that. Now to the task at hand, let me do what I came to do. I want to bless you guys with this song, and how many know that God will give you a crown? And when it's all over, we're going to see his face. Musicians, if you will, please, I shall wear a crown. Let me hear that intro real quick, please, if you don't mind. That sounds real good. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. How many know that when we leave this earth, we get to be with the Father? When it's all over, we get to see his face. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. 
singing all around the building. Come on, let me hear you all over the building. Lift your voices to heaven and say, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to come on, step to your feet uh, and lift your voice uh, and tell the story. Yes, yeah, uh, how he made it. Uh, Courtney, he made it. Uh, I said he made it. Yeah, I said he made it. I'm going to. Hallelujah, yeah. Come on, one more time all around the building, yeah, yes, yeah. I'm going to put on. Come on, can we get a witness in here? I thank you for the story of Courtney Hamilton. And he made it, he made it, he made it, he made it, he made it. He made it, he made it, I thank you. He made it, I honor you. He made it, oh thank you. He made it, uh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. I shall wear a crown. Oh. Thank you, Lord. 
for his life and his legacy. I done sang my own self happy. But if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Come on, somebody, tell the Lord, thank you for the time that we got to share. Thank you for every blessing that you bestowed upon us. Thank you for bringing us here this day. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we greet you in the mighty, marvelous name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and our Savior. We thank him for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall continually rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'm honored and I'm privileged to be uh, with you today for this uh, celebration of life and legacy and love of Master Deputy Courtney Harold Hamilton. I want to give honor to uh, Dr. William uh, Watley and um, the St. Philip AME staff and all of those that have uh, opened up their house for uh, really a special day. I want to give an honor to uh, Sheriff Blessings, the Cab Sheriff Department, and everybody here in your respective places. Again, it is an honor. And I am really humbled uh, to be with this family today. Um, I didn't know Courtney personally. And uh, to stand and to eulogize someone personally, it's got to be a call. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. And so uh, to Mother uh, Pearson and uh, the Wilcox family and uh, the Hamilton family, Again, we thank God for this call day. This is a, a call moment. And uh, Romans 8.28 says, all things, all things. <laughs> if you're from my side of town, we say everything. All things work together for the good. For the good. This is a good moment. And then that scripture says, for those that are called according to his purpose. I heard Miriam talk about purpose, purpose of life. Life is precious. And the times that we're living in, it's important that you think about the call. I heard um, some confirmations that I know I'm in the right place. I know that there is a final call that will take place. And uh, I want to use that as a thought today of a final call as we honor the life of this servant. You know, we heard Miriam talking about being tough. And all I could think about, you can't be a servant if you're not tough. You got to have a grit. You got to have something that will endure. You got to have something that will continue. People may not understand you. People may not honor you. People may not like what you do, may not feel you if you're not in church. You know, you got to be tough to be a servant. And that's what God has really, really created us all to be servant. I salute and honor those that sacrifice and serve and make sure we remain in law and order. Come on, Nick, y'all could do better than that. That's nice for me. But when we really honor those that serve and sacrifice and get a call, I don't know the average call you may get in a day, but you're always getting a call. You're getting called in the middle of the night. You're getting called to help people. And so when you think about life, is really a call. And we all will get that final call. And it may make you pause. It may make you cry. But we thank him for a final call. I'm going to jump right into my assignment today. Really, and I want to read with you, read to you uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, I'm going to read verse 11 through 19. I'm just going to talk to you. I can preach, but I don't think you came for a preacher. But I believe that God is speaking to us, and we've heard it through messages. We've heard it through everybody that has spoken. And we thank God for being with us. For well, he said, family, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And even in the day of mourning, he's still God, and he's still good. And his mercy endures forever. Uh, I said, his mercy endures forever. So Deuteronomy 
30, verse 11, it says, I'm read from the New King James Version. It says, for this commandment, which I command you today, is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off, verse 12. It is not in heaven that you should say who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Verse 14 says, but the word is very near you in your mouth, in your heart, that you may do it. Verse 15 says, see, I have, see, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. I want y'all to think about that for a moment. All of us have this set up today. And it is an option, it is a choice, it is an understanding that it is life. The Bible says it very clearly. Today, life and good, death and evil. Verse 16 says, in that I command you today. Uh, he commands us today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Verse 17 says, but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Verse 18, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over to the, jo the Jordan to go in and possess. This is a key verse. If you don't remember anything I said, Hear this word. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I think it's a marvelous thing that God will tell us Choose. Some may think like Morpheus and say, choose the red pill or choose the blue pill. But the thing about life is we all have to make choices. And we all must understand there are consequences for the choices that we make. And the marvelous thing I love about this text, Miriam, is that he says, choose ye this day. And then he comes and tells you what to choose. He doesn't ask you to choose life. He tells you to choose life. Now, the great thing about this, as I just, uh, just read this and meditate on it, I realize this. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses. He didn't say I call heaven and hell. He said, I call heaven and earth. Why did he call heaven and earth? Because he said, I've given you life and life more abundantly. And everything that you do in this life is judged from heaven to earth. And I just want you to think about this real just simple. He says, I call it as a witness today. There was a call. Many are called, but few are chosen. When we think about the life of uh, Deputy Hamilton, he was chosen. He was chosen to be a light in his family. He was chosen to be a son to mom and purse. He was chosen to be a good cousin. His life displayed a lot of chosen moments. And it might have been tough. But it was a chosen life that endured, endured up until the point that God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The question that I have for all of us today, what type of life are you choosing today? What type of decisions are you making today? Outside of uniforms, outside of family, outside of things that we're comfortable with, really God is really giving us an opportunity to choose. And he would use a life to get your attention. He would use your, he would use your family member's life to cause you to draw closer, to make a choice. Not just for a shot or a vaccination, but choose who you will serve. What I love about the department, it's all about serving. The greatest gift that we can give to mankind is to serve. 
If we had more people in the outhouse, the White House, the Moore House, the Sheriff's House serving with a servant's heart, it wouldn't be hard to choose life. It wouldn't, hard to, it wouldn't be hard to choose good. What I'm saying to you, brothers, sisters, men, women, kings, queens, deputies, sheriffs, all of you that are here, the great thing that God has given us is an opportunity to choose life. I love it. The brother came up and said, the funeral is not for the dead, but it is for the living. And if you're living today, the question that I really have to ask, how are you living and what type of life have you chosen to live? If you don't choose to serve Jesus Christ, you got to serve something. And if you don't serve Jesus Christ, nine times out of ten, you're going to serve yourself. And when you look at it, you, you really don't control heaven or earth. So when you think about the real deal, to be what God has made you to be. The Bible says he created us in his image, red and yellow, black and white. <laughs> they are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. We're all God's children, and we all have a mandate to serve. I honor and I salute the men and women that actually put on a uniform and serve. And what I'm saying to you today, family, if you don't take anything from the service of this life, if you don't take anything, you need to realize that I've got to make a decision of who and how I'm going to serve. When you serve him, you can give life. When you serve him, you can change your life. None of us really can make a decision to change our own life if it was not his will. And so when you think about the will of God, he is always thinking. Think about this. The Bible says this. Let me give you a little Bible. The lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. The lamb wasn't waiting for you to make a decision on receiving him. The lamb was slain even before you was created, before you was birthed, before you was pushed out, before you was living, and before you died. The lamb was thinking about you even before you made a decision to get up this morning. So when you give your life to him, it is for a service, for life, and life more abundantly. Are y'all getting this? Talk to me for a minute. Are you getting this? Again, I can preach, but I really felt the Lord saying, just talk to the people. Because what I'm saying to you will follow you all the days of your life. And you will have to choose. And I pray that you get the answer to the test question, because he's already given it, because he said it very clearly, as I read again, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. It ain't seem a little funny today. Choose life. You might not feel like giving him glory. Choose life. You might not want to go to church, feel to choose life. You might not want to be all that you want to be, but in this being, you've got to choose life. And this life comes with liberty and freedom that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And when he died on Calvary, he died so that you can have life. The word has already been preached. It's already been demonstrated. It's just a simple thing today. Choose life. The call to choose life. This is the final call. And when he says this very clearly in verse 20, he says that you may love the Lord, your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life family and the length of your days. Life doesn't stop with Courtney Hamilton. Life should be beginning for many of us to live and leave a legacy that will endure because it's tough. Are y'all with me? This is what he said. He says, for he is your life and length of your days. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. To Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. I'm going to decrease right here. And I want you to just think about that one thing. What will you choose today? Will you choose to walk out of these doors and just hear this message and it just be a good sermon? Or will you hear this thought and think about every decision that you make, every person that you encounter, every house you enter and everything that you involve with from this day forth? This is a crucial moment. If you don't choose to be vaccinated, that's your choice. 
I'm not here to convince you. I'm sure Miriam probably convinced you. I'm here to convince you to choose life. A life that is much further. I love that. I heard somebody say, when we think about this, we don't look like what we used to be. And when you choose to live, make sure you choose that life and, and, and include him in your day-to-day -day living, family. None of us are promised tomorrow. It's not getting any easier. And as tough as it's getting, we know that we can find life in him. Because in him we move. In him we are and we have our being. God bless this family. I thank you for the honor to share with you. I pray that something that God has spoken from his word will continue to cause you to live and celebrate the life of this man that served rough, tough, and honorably, and, and that you will continue to do what you continue to do. Love each other as Courtney loved on you. God bless you. Thank you for the time. God be the glory. Let's give God another hand clap of praise as we have been commanded to choose life. Before we close this program, or uh, close this homegoing service, there's one other thing that we need to do. Uh, will everyone in the field operations please stand uniform and criminal process? <laughs> Courtney Hamilton, please stand with us, please. Courtney. On behalf of the field operations, we would like to present you, Courtney, this badge in honor of Officer Hamilton's career with the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office. And the plaque simply reads, in loving memory, Sheriff Deputy Courtney Hamilton, number 2231, 24 years of service. End of watch, July the 28th, 2021. As you can see, the sheriff and chief are standing with you to present this. We love you and thank you for allowing us to serve with your dad. Amen. Well, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. As we prepare at this time, we're going to ask Willie Watkins' staff to come give instructions from this point on. Amen.
praise. That was good enough for me, but I said give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. To the eulogists and the many friends who gathered in the pulpit, the family happens to say thank you. Thank you for your kind words, your gestures, your prayers, your thoughts. In the days ahead, they do ask that you continue to pray for them and keep them covered. To the many friends who have gathered, the family, family happens to thank you as well. Thank you for your calls, your thoughts, your prayers, your floral tributes. To the many friends in blue, to the many family in blue, I'm sorry, that has come, this family happens to say thank you as well. And I saw the sheriff did exit. We'll thank her as well. And to the family, on behalf of our senior director, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, and the entire Willie A. Watkins funeral home staff, we thank you for entrusting your loved one into our care. We pray that we have said something or done something to ease this burden on you. And if not, we're here for you during the days of head. And in doing so, we have prepared this memorial plaque for you to keep and cherish in your days ahead. 